Hi guys, in this video lecture, we'll be talking about GFP or green fluorescent protein tagging and a little bit about the green fluorescent proteins. Green fluorescent protein is a very small stretch of amino acid containing protein sequence, some 338 probably amino acid long uh, sequence, protein sequence. Now this GFP as the name suggests, green fluorescent protein, that means it's a protein which provides green colored fluorescence light coming out of it, that's why green fluorescent protein and that's what exactly GFP does. So GFP is a protein, it was first discovered in a jellyfish, you know jellyfish can glow in light, beautiful uh, pictures, you can see the videos uh, online. So jellyfish and the example of the jellyfish that they discovered is Victoria sorry aqueous Victoria aqueous Victoria is the name of the jellyfish from where this GFP protein first first extracted and this GFP protein is a blessing for the biologists in all around the places in all the kind of experimentation GFP provides a huge role understanding the outcome and we use this GFP protein for understanding the position of a particular gene whether the gene is inserted inside the cell or not whether the protein is expressed inside the cell or not so GFP can be used as a tagging molecule to understand certain functions. So what we can call, we call this GFP protein as a reporter, reporter protein. So we can use the gene for the GFP protein as a reporter gene during the genetic construction experiments, right. We can construct the gene on our own, the plasmid on our own by adding the GFP to make ensure whether the gene of our interest is properly transcribed or not or similarly we can also check this GFP protein by the expression of the proteins out there in the microscopic view also. So the idea about the GFP here, the small protein, how exactly this works we don't know but the thing is let's say this is the GFP protein, GFP protein gets excited due to blue light blue light, blue to UV range of light, it gets excited from blue to UV range of light, upon gets excited, GFP releases very light, I mean the light range of green, which is very bright obviously, but light green emission, light green emission of light, fluorescence, this is the green fluorescence that we observe that is a function of GFP gets excited from the blue to UV range of light releases green fluorescence that we can visualize. Now we can use this GFP protein or GFP gene. So GFP protein itself can act as this green fluorescence thing or GFP gene can also be taken. Let us say we are doing an experiment for checking the expression of a particular gene. And this is the plasmid let us say we have and in this plasmid we let us let us say we have an origin of replication here and we have a set of genes let us say we have the promoter over here and downstream of the promoter if we look at at this orientation the downstream of promoter we have our gene let us say the beta galactosidase gene beta gal gene we want to see the expression of this gene right because we want to insert this gene inside a bacteria and want to see the expression or something. So what we can do, we simply can place this GFP gene in front of this beta gal gene. We can just place it there, okay? Or we can place very closely either this side or this side, whatever side, right? And we can easily accomplish that using recombinant DNA technology. We can do this using restriction enzymes to cleave this section out, then add the ligase enzyme to join this GFP gene with this desired portion. So once that thing is there, after that what we can do is that we will allow them and we take this plasmid to insert it inside the bacteria and we want to see the expression of beta gal, whether the cell is expressing this beta gal or not. Now remember, 
if the cell is expressing the beta gal how it will look like it will look something like this so it will express first from this gfp from this area and then it will start express the beta gal like that first this gfp then beta gal portions if it express beta gal it will first express this gfp containing region then the beta gal region right so both these things together so after that once we extract them and see from outside during the fluorescence nature right we just turn off the light we can see the fluorescence that's it and we put some uv there only and we can see the light so there what we can see is the presence of this light so the presence of the light inside that cell indicates that they are expressing beta gal gene there right because small molecules will be there inside that cell let's say this is the bacterial cell and this is the nucleus the nucleus may contain or the plasmid may contain these things but once we turn off the light and turn on all this all this uv we'll see small portions throughout the cell scattered giving this green color right green fluorescence that means all of these things definitely are beta gals because beta gal are expressed then only we'll see this so reporter this is the portion where we use this green fluorescent protein as a reporter gene as a reporter gene reporter gene means reporter gene reports the expression of the another gene which is added or which is closely placed with that gene then only we can see this is the reporter gene that we can see from here so this is the example of how gfp is act as a reporter gene similarly what we can use is that we have cells we have cell in microscopy we have different regions let's say this is a microtubule section that we want to visualize properly so what we can do if we take out the fresh gfps and we can add the gfp properly to those microtubule portions surrounded to the microtubule portions so then we turn off the light turn on the uv or blue light then we can see the emission and by doing this we can see all the microtubule contents of the cell only except any other thing because GFP is made in such a way, modified in such a way, so that it can only bind with microtubules, not any other portion. So by doing this, we can visualize all the microtubules except other things. And by this way, this GFP is a it, it opens a whole new era of imaging, microscopic imaging technologies in dark. And this is they are brilliant. They are beautiful design. We can see the apoptosis pathway going in. We can see the cell division going in very fast. In all these cases, microtubules are growing and shrinking and everything with this GFP tagging. And this becomes very easy. We can use GFP as a reporter gene. We can use it for direct fixation and looking at the microscope. We can tag this GFP to a living cell to see the growing and shrinking of microtubules. We can observe the microtubule dynamics properly. And we can also see the cell division properly. We can also see the vesicle transfer, the vesicle transport inside the cell using GFP tags. That's why this, the discovery of GFP is worth doing. And the person who discovered get a Nobel Prize in chemistry for discovering GFP in 2008, right? So that's a brilliant use nowadays. Either in microscopy or in direct cell imaging, live cell imaging, or in case of the reporter elements. Okay. But now, GFP was the first protein that was discovered, remember, from this aqueous Victoria jellyfish. But now it's been modified. We can modify this protein according to our purpose. We can modify in such a way that this protein binds with a specific protein only inside the cell. We can modify in such a way that it provides, instead of green, it can provide the red light or orange light or euro light, different fluorescence. Okay. So in such a way, we have different modifications of GFP, like O, like M orange, M cherry. These are the different types, different examples of modified GFPs, which are modified by us for our purposes. Because let's say we want to visualize two or three different proteins, or so two or three different things inside the cell and their interaction. So if all of them are of same color, that doesn't make sense. So you need to have multiple color. So we go for color orange, cherry. So orange means it will emit orange color. Cherry, it will emit 
red colored fluorescence there are there are yellow color fluorescence uh, secreting all these proteins or fluorescence containing proteins so gfp is being modified majorly we modify gfps with small point mutations but now there are multiple way of modifying a protein because you know it's a simple protein coding gene with only 338 probably 338 amino acid sequence so we can easily modify that protein uh, modify that gene in different places to create proteins functional because we don't need any other function of the protein we only need this protein to express the light to provide us the fluorescence that's what so if the fluorescence part remains we can modify it in our way so that it will bind with different regions of the proteins and we can get the idea of what kind of proteins we are looking what what is the interaction between different proteins inside the cell and what is actin filament what is a microtubule and what is intermediate filaments tagging them three things with three different colored uh, fragments of fluorescent dye but again uh, expressing of gfp is difficult and also uh, all this process of gfp is kind of expensive a little amount but still it's a whole new era of biology with gfp we cannot imagine biology with gfp right now it's a huge blessing we can use it for gene mapping we can use it for finding a particular gene we can use it for live cell imaging as well as normal kind of cell imaging and many more processes so that's it guys if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like this and also share this video with your friends in all social networks thank you all the best